Hello everyone and welcome to the Synology Partner Online Training. We have an awesome topic for everyone here today, going over managed services at scale, utilizing the Synology ecosystem. This is an especially important topic for all of our partners watching here today. Quick introduction, my name's Cody, I'm a product manager here at Synology and I'm going to be your guide for this one this time around. So let's start off with our agenda today. We have three main topics we're going to focus on. We're gonna start off with monitoring and management at scale to allow you to keep tabs on the fleet of Synology devices you're managing for your clients. We're then going to take a look at C2 services at scale and how you can manage large quantities of clients while they utilize C2 for their needs. We're then gonna round things out with on-prem services at scale and how you can integrate Synology into your solutions offerings. So we're starting off in section one with monitoring and management at scale. In this section, we're gonna focus on three main applications. We're gonna start off with CMS or central management system that allows you to monitor and manage multiple Synology NAS from a single host that you own. We're then gonna take a look at Active Insight, which is a cloud-based automated monitoring and protection service that gives you both proactive and reactive troubleshooting advice for your technicians. We're gonna round things out in this section by looking at surveillance CMS or central management system. And this allows you to use a central host for monitoring and surveillance expansion in case that is a service you offer as a managed service provider. So let's begin with central management system or CMS. Now this is an application that runs on a Synology NAS that you yourself own as a managed service provider. So it's completely self-hosted. This allows you to monitor and manage the fleet of Synology devices you're taking care of for your clients. Now, once these devices are connected to the CMS host, you're able to organize these devices by groups and apply policies to them. So let's say you have a client with many Synology NAS in their deployment for various reasons. You can group those together and apply policies to just those. Likewise, if you have technicians that specialize in certain verticals, you can organize your devices by verticals and apply policies to just those and have that team of technicians as managers for that group of devices. Lastly, you can apply some customization utilizing CMS. We have task scheduler built into CMS so you can upload your custom scripts and apply those to group policies. So let's talk about some ways you can utilize CMS as a managed service provider. To begin, let's say you have your main office and you have a Synology NAS located there that's acting as your CMS host. You'll have clients around the state or around the country that also have Synology NAS deployed there. These NAS can be doing various different activities for your clients from file serving to even backing up endpoints through Active Backup for Business. At the same time, those NAS are performing those on-site activities for your clients. They can also be connected back to your CMS host and your technicians can monitor and manage those devices even remotely. On top of all of this, your clients can also interact with a wide range of C2 services and we'll get into how to manage those at scale in the next section. So here we are on our main Synology NAS inside of Central Management System or CMS. So this is our CMS host. And you can see we already have some stats populated here because we have at least one NAS paired back to our CMS host. So we can see some things like volume usage, services enabled, and DSM update status. Now, if you're setting this up for the first time, you're not gonna be seeing a lot of stats in your environment. But in our case today, what we're going to do is actually add a new server to the system to be managed by our CMS host, essentially onboarding a new client and getting them taken care of. So we're gonna to move to the server tab, and we're gonna go ahead and click add. Now we're gonna follow through with this wizard and we're gonna add existing servers because DSM is already installed. We're then gonna choose how we wanna to connect to this device and we're gonna choose IP address, FQDN, or Quick Connect ID in our case. Now on this next screen, we're gonna choose our connection type for getting this paired back to our CMS host. In our case, we're gonna use Quick Connect ID to make it nice and easy. Now, once we hit done, that's pretty much it for getting this remote Synology NAS paired back to our CMS host. And we can begin monitoring and managing it from this pane of glass right here. Now that we have servers added to our system, let's begin organizing our fleet. And to do so, we're gonna create groups. Keep in mind, whenever you set up groups, you can set it up by client, for example, in case they have multiple Synology NAS on site, or you could even set it up by vertical if you wanted to manage it that way. For us, we're gonna do it by client. So we're gonna name this group our client's name, Acme Corp and add their Synology NAS as member servers. So we're gonna choose the one that we just added a couple seconds ago. Now that that's all done, we can choose our group policies we want to apply to this group. Now we wanna create a new policy in just a minute, so we're gonna be revisiting this in a second. 
Now we can select administrators for this group. Let's say we had a technician on staff named Ben that we wanted to actually add as an administrator because they're going to be taking care of this client. So we can add them as an admin here. Now that we have that group created, you can see a quick overview like managed servers and administrators on this main screen, or you can drill down further with the view button to see member servers, any applied rules, those policies, or the administrators applied to this group. Now that we have these groups created, we can go into policy and actually begin applying those policies to the groups. You can see we have some policies created for standard security settings, installing packages, or enabling DSM auto update but we're gonna set up a rule to aggregate notifications on our main CMS host. So we're gonna name it something similar to that. And on the next screen, we're gonna be able to choose the policies we wanna to apply to this specific group. So we can actually select what policy we want from this list. You can see there's quite a few, but for us, we're gonna choose notification. And we're going to drill down into CMS and enable both of these checkboxes. Essentially, this will aggregate all the notifications from all of the servers inside of that group onto our CMS host so that we can react to them accordingly. You could apply this to all servers or a group, but for us, we're going to apply it to our Acme Corp group. Now once that's all done, we can choose the priority of this specific policy. We can leave it at number one since that's the only one, or you could change its order if you needed to. You can also lock its position so it can't be changed at a later time. Now that that's all finished, you can see that that policy will be applied to that Acme Corp group. Next on the list is Task Scheduler. Now Task Scheduler is the most customizable thing inside of CMS. It allows you to run scripts for your different groups and apply those scripts inside of policies. So you could do a reboot, shutdown, wake on land script, or apply a custom one here. And again, that can be applied in a group policy. Next, under log, you can see all the different logs for your host logs. And these are essentially all the changes we've been making to the system since we started this demo, like adding the server, etc. Now under server notification, these are all the aggregated notifications we're now getting from those remote Synology NAS servers. Now in either of these menus, you can easily export all of these different notifications and logs, either to HTML or to a CSV file. Now under DSM update, this is a great feature inside of CMS. You can actually update your entire Synology fleet at the click of a button or you can get a little bit more granular and actually update individual Synology NAS if you needed to. So we're gonna select one of these and click update. And on this next screen, you're gonna be able to see you can update to the latest DSM version or update by a .pat file manually. Now on the same screen, you can actually go into settings and choose your update settings. Now you can check for the latest and greatest DSM update or only check for important security updates for DSM. Now there's a couple other things you can do in monitoring an update, like check the storage status of those remote servers. So we can see their volume utilization, drive health, and even the shared folders that are listed in those Synology NAS. Likewise, under service, you can see what services are enabled or disabled on the various systems. And finally, you can go under package and monitor specific packages for your devices. So as you can see, Central Management System is a powerful tool for managing your fleet of Synology devices for your clients. So let's discuss how you can utilize CMS as a managed service provider in a real world break fix scenario. Let's say once again, you have your main office, a Synology NAS located there that's acting as a CMS host. And you also have a client out in the field that has a Synology NAS there that's acting as their central file server. Now that file server is also connected to and managed by your CMS host through central management system. Now, if something happens to that device, let's say someone spills coffee on it, or there's a water main break that damages the system, CMS will alert your teams that that system is no longer connected to your CMS host. Now, as a managed service provider, it's always wise to have extra spares on hand. So if you have an extra Synology chassis, you can actually have one of your technicians drive out that Synology NAS to your client site. Now, if the drives aren't damaged from the previous device, you can actually just reinstall the drives in order and boot up the new Synology NAS, giving your client access to their data as it was before the damaging event occurred. What's great about this whole scenario is that if you have this spare on hand, the time to recovery for your clients is only about the length of time it takes for your technician to drive out there, reinstall the drives, and boot up the system. Typically, about even 30 minutes, depending on how far away your client is.
Moving on to Active Insight. Active Insight is a cloud-based monitoring solution. So you're able to access the platform from anywhere that you have an internet connection. Even your technicians on the go or in the field can access the platform through the mobile app. On top of that, Active Insight provides proactive and reactive solutions to issues. So your technicians gain step-by-step -step procedures for how to get these issues resolved. For example, if a drive malfunctions. On top of that, you can also update the entire fleet of Synology devices in one click from directly inside of Active Insight. This includes the OS like DSM and any packages installed on the systems. On top of that, Active Insight also has reporting built into the system. So you can send out reports to your technicians or to other stakeholders at your client's site so you can coordinate service. You can also organize your entire fleet by groups, by region or by vertical, which is especially handy if your technicians specialize in a certain vertical and take care of those clients themselves. On top of that, you can also do device delegation, which is one of the most important features inside of Active Insight. You can easily adopt management of your clients' devices through their individual Synology accounts. So here we are in our Active Insight portal. And keep in mind, we're actually using our demo environment that you can find on our website. So if you want to explore this environment for yourself, you can definitely do so after this webinar. For us today, we're going to start off by doing some account delegation so that we can begin taking care of clients. So what we're going to do is move over into the Management tab. And we're going to go and select Account Delegation from the top bar. Now we're going to click Add and begin filling out this field here. We're going to type in the email address associated with the Synology account of the client that you actually want to manage in Active Insight. Now it's going to send them an invitation and they're going to accept that through that email invitation. And once they do so, you're going to be able to manage all of their Synology devices that are paired to the Synology account. Now, once that's all done, you'll see them in this account delegation list. And if we move over to the host tab along the top, it's going to show you a list of all the devices that are paired back to this Active Insight instance. You can see some different details like host name, if they're connected with a license, model number, and who the host owner is. Now, if we go to the main host tab along the left, that will show you a graphical representation of all these hosts and some different metrics at a glance for those different Synology NAS, from CPU usage to memory, etc. Now that we have all these devices listed here, we're going to go ahead and begin grouping our devices to manage the Synology fleet. We're managing this by regions, but you could also do so by vertical. We're going to edit one of these because it's pretty much the same as creating one. So if you go to host, you can select from your entire list of Synology devices paired back to Active Insight. So that's how you can organize things by vertical if you needed to. Now if we go over to email, this is going to be where you set up email notifications for stakeholders of this group. Now this could be technicians on your IT team or even stakeholders at your client's site, for example. You can enter multiple email addresses here. So now that we have all these groups and notifications set up, what we're going to do is go back over to the host tab and show how you can filter this list down to manage it that much easier. So we're going to go over to the filter button on the top right. And once there, you can see you can filter by model number if you wanted to, by group. So if we select group and choose the North American branch, you can see all the devices paired to that group. And likewise, we can go by host owner, by Synology account, and therefore by client if you wanted to. Now that we have this all filtered down, we can select one of these cards and drill down into these devices. On this first page, you're going to be able to see performance metrics for the system, for example, for storage metrics, and even service performance for internal DSM services or even packages on the device. Now if you go to storage, you're going to be able to see volume usage trends and storage pool allocation as well. Now the most important tab here is probably going to be events for everyone because this is where the proactive and reactive events and troubleshooting come into play. Proactive would be a warning and reactive would be critical. You can see we have several events already listed for this device, from important updates to login attempts from unusual locations or at unusual times. So what we're going to do is we're going to drill down into the login attempt from an unusual geolocation. So we're going to click into this one. And right when we open it up, you're going to notice it's actually mapped out and it'll show you where this login attempt was performed from. Now we can continue to scroll down to see additional details. You'll notice Amy Lynn attempted to log in from Versailles, France. Now, if you knew that Amy was working from France, then this might not be of concern to you. But if Amy isn't in France at this point in time, you're going to want to continue to scroll down and take some of the recommended solutions. Now, all events in Active Insight, whether it's a warning or if it's critical, will have a recommended solution for how to get it resolved. So you can follow that if you need. Another nifty feature of Active Insight is you can actually mute 
your alerts and have them return at a later time. So this will give us some time to reach out to Amy to make sure that they actually did try to log in from there. Or you can resolve it if you know if everything is okay and get it off of your list. Now we're gonna move over to the event screen on the top left. And that is actually where all of your events live without having to drill down into each individual device. Now you can see all the different categories here for new, muted, resolved, and all. But you can also filter this list of events down using the rightmost filter button, just like you could on the host screen. You can filter by model, group, and once again, by host owner. Now in each one of these menus for your events, new, muted, resolved, all, there is an export feature. So you can export this list into a CSV file to keep for your own records, or you could even share it to your clients. Now we're gonna shift gears here and move over into the protection tab on Active Insight. Now underneath DSM update, you're gonna be able to update DSM for all of your devices in one go. Or you can drill down a little bit further into each individual device and update them as needed. But on this main screen, you can see what current version they're on and what important releases they might wanna be updated to. So we're gonna select one of these devices and we're gonna click update. And you can see you can choose what preferred DSM version you wanna to update to and even view some of the release notes. Now, underneath package, you can do much the same thing, but for packages on the different NAS devices. Now, first and foremost, you can edit your package list to actually change what you actually want to monitor. We're monitoring all of them in our case. Now, you can select one of these packages if you wanted to, and actually select the details button on the top right, and then you can see all the different devices that might need this update. You can either update them in individually with this button, or you can go to the host itself and actually log into DSM and update it from there. Now, underneath Hyper Backup, you're going to see all the different Hyper Backup events that are running across your different devices, whether they're canceling, backing up, if they're successful, if there's a partial success, or even if there's some sort of failure. So let's drill down into this authentication failed event by clicking the event button. And you can see, once again, the recommended solutions for getting this resolved. And again, every Active Insight event will have some sort of recommended solution listed inside of the event. Now, underneath login activity, you're going to be seeing all the different login activities across all of your different devices. Now, you can see a quick snapshot of all the different unresolved events, etc., for each device. Again, you can filter this list down by model, by group, or even by host owner by Synology account. Now, if we drill down into this specific device right here. You can see all the different login activities from login events to failed logins, etc. But if you wanted to set your threshold for getting alerts for all these different attempts, you can do so here. So we can edit one of these thresholds right here and change the rule to change the amount of login attempts over a certain interval before you actually get an alert. Now lastly, we have the reporting mechanism inside of Active Insight. So you can have reports generated and sent to necessary stakeholders whenever you need to. So you can do this manually with the Generate Now button, or you can actually create or edit a new report. So we're gonna edit since the Create option is pretty much the same as well. So you can choose what topics you actually want sent out in this report, and you can choose what hosts you want involved with this report and included in this report. And you can set up your schedule, have it run manually or on a schedule you set here in the bottom menu. And lastly, you can change your email settings for who you want to actually receive this report. This could be multiple different email addresses from your internal IT team to even stakeholders at your client's site. So as you can see, Active Insight is a powerful tool and using Active Insight along with Central Management System gives you the ultimate in management for all of your Synology devices. So let's round things out by talking about Surveillance Central Management System or SCMS. Now this application provides global monitoring of an entire surveillance station deployment allowing you to centralize your viewing of all the different recording servers at your client sites, especially important if you're providing this service to your clients. On top of that, Surveillance Station CMS provides a scale-out architecture up to 10,000 cameras. That means that you're able to add multiple recording servers on a client site to expand camera capacity past what a single NAS can handle. On top of that, there's easy migration of those cameras between the different recording servers, allowing you to balance the workload on the system should you need to. Lastly, there's also failover support. So not just adding recording servers to client sites to expand capacity, you can also add failover servers to your client site. So if anything happens to the main recording server, 
you can actually fail over the camera feeds and recordings to the failover server. Likewise, if that original NAS comes back online because there was a, maybe a network hiccup or something like that, those recordings can fail back along with any snapshots taken, bringing the system back to normal after that network issue is resolved. So here we are on our main surveillance station CMS host. We're gonna start off in Monitor Center to get acquainted with that. Now, as we open Monitor Center, this is your command center for viewing all camera feeds, even from recording servers paired through Surveillance Station CMS. Now, once you have those recording servers from your client sites paired back to your CMS host, they'll be listed on the left-hand pane under Devices and Tools, and you'll be able to pull camera feeds and lay them into a layout utilizing that feature right there. So this is how you actually provide monitoring services for your clients if you offer that service. Now to get those recording servers added, you'll do so through CMS. So let's go ahead and head there. Now we'll add a recording server in just a minute, but I wanna highlight some other features of failover servers for now. Now, first off, under failover server, you'll see we already have one created and we're not gonna add another one today. But under failover settings, you can change some awesome advanced features here. Now you can set up an automatic failover if there's a package abnormality or a storage issue and stop a failover if the recording server comes back online, like if there's a network hiccup, for example. Now, fail back settings means that you can actually fail back all recordings and snapshots back to the recording server when it comes back online and have them organized correctly in the timeline. So back in recording server, we're gonna go ahead and add one in now. And first off, Surveillance Station CMS is going to scan your local network for any devices you wanna add there, but we're gonna add one manually because it's remote to our CMS host, it's on our client site. So instead of choosing IP or FQDN, we're going to use Quick Connect in this case just to make it that much easier. Now it's going to go ahead and search for this device through its Quick Connect ID, and in just a second we're going to be changing some additional settings here. Now that that's all been found and that kind of thing, we're going to set our permissions for this specific device. So the first checkbox we want to leave checked so it prevents other CMS hosts from pairing with this recording server because we want to control it for our clients. But the second one we want to uncheck so our clients can still create layouts and control their own recording server on site. Now once we have that all set, we're going to go ahead and authenticate the system. We're going to type in our user credentials and get that all finished. All right, now let's go ahead and click authenticate. And in just a couple seconds, we're going to see a green check mark and that's a good sign and then we can finalize this connection. Now on this next screen, you're gonna be able to choose your failover server. We're not gonna choose one for this one today. Now once we hit done, that'll actually finalize the connection for this CMS recording server at our client site. Now once this is all connected, you're gonna be able to see that this client site recording server has at least one camera paired back to it. So what we're gonna do next is hop back over to Monitor Center and we're gonna minimize some of the other things under devices and tools so we can see that new recording server we added right there. So you can see the NAS name listed and we can begin pulling that camera feed and laying it out into a layout. That's how you incorporate a new client for your monitoring services. Now let's hop back over to CMS because you can do a couple other things for managing this remote recording server. You can see there's all these applications listed at the bottom. So if we select one like notifications for example, you'll be changing the settings for this remote recording server all from one location on your central surveillance CMS host. Now, you can set up your email notifications, SMS or push notifications, and set what rules you wanna be notified for. And you can also set a schedule in this menu. So as you can see, Surveillance Station CMS is a powerful tool for managing all of your clients' surveillance storage and all of their surveillance feeds if you do offer that service as a managed service provider. So we're gonna move into section two, C2 services at scale. Now keep in mind as we go through this section, we're not going to deep dive into each individual service themselves. We're gonna be taking a look at how we can manage all the subscriptions for C2 services that your clients might be using. Let's start with our C2 cloud refresher. To begin, let's take a look at C2 storage. This was the original functionality that was released with the C2 cloud platform. It provides secure cloud backups of your NAS data through the use of hyper backup and can also be utilized as a hybrid file server destination through the use of the hybrid share service built into DSM-7. Next, we have C2 Identity, a cross-site credential and device management solution that helps solve credential management for organizations that have locations that might be quite far apart, even across the country. Next, we have C2 Backup, which is a direct endpoint to cloud backups from anywhere. This includes your PCs, servers, and even Mac devices. 
Next, we have C2 Object, a simple and affordable object storage solution with S3 compatible APIs. A great solution to use if you're already familiar with that structure and it already integrates with our Cloud Sync application on your Synology NAS. We also have C2 Transfer, a secure file transfer solution with identity verification. So that means that the data that you send using C2 Transfer is only given to the ones that you intend. Next, we have C2 Surveillance, a great way to secure your camera footage with simultaneous recording to the cloud. Lastly, we have C2 Password, a zero-knowledge password manager to store all of your credentials, including bank account information and even sensitive documents like your passport number. Now that is a lot of services, and you might be wondering how I'm going to manage all of these services for my clients that might be utilizing the Synology C2 platform. And that's where the C2 Partner Portal and the Partner Program come into play. It does just that. It gives you easy management of C2 for your clients. With the C2 Partner Program and Partner Portal, it gives you multi-tenant management. So that means that as your business grows, as you get more clients that you're taking care of, you can easily adopt them into the C2 Partner Portal and manage their subscriptions there. On top of that, there's consolidated billing. You don't have to jump into each individual client Synology account to then bill them for the different services. You can do so from one easy to use location. Lastly, there's also tiered incentives available with the C2 Partner Program. For more information on those, go ahead and reach out to your Synology Technical Account Manager and they can provide additional information on that. So here we are inside of our C2 Partner Portal and we're underneath the Customers tab. You can see all the customers that are currently managed by us, their Synology account, their organization name, and even the description that we might have applied whenever we added them in. Now we can see some other statuses here and we can reach out if we need to to those clients. But in our case, what we're going to do is actually add in a new client and onboard them into the C2 Partner Portal. So we're going to hit plus, and this is very similar to Active Insight, where you would invite them through their Synology account email. Now once this is all loaded, we can click the View button at the top to see what their current status is, and we see that they're still in the inviting stage. Now what that means is that they haven't accepted this email that it was sent to them. So this is from the customer's perspective. This is what they would see whenever you're trying to incorporate them into your C2 Partner Portal. What they need to do is hit the click here button. It'll drop them back into C2 in their own instance where they can accept the Synology Partner invitation. So they want to go ahead and read the agreement and hit the checkbox and click accept. They'll be prompted to enter in their C2 encryption key because anything and everything in C2 is encrypted. So if you haven't set up your encryption key yet, you'd be prompted to do so. Now once that's all finished, the user can now log in to their C2 environment and grant permissions to their managed service provider for all the different C2 services. So we're going to edit service permission here. And once this is open, we can select the different C2 services we want them to manage. So we can select them all in our case. And once that's done, you're going to be able to see all the different permitted services listed underneath Synology Partner in this menu. Now back on the partner perspective, we can now see this new client that we just added. And we can see their status is now managing instead of invited. So we can actually drill down into this specific account and see what services we're actually managing. So right along the top, we can see all those managed services that the client selected on the previous menu. Now you can see this client isn't using C2 for very much yet. Right now they're just using C2 password, which is a great no knowledge password manager for these users. However, let's go ahead and subscribe them to a new service. Let's say that they want to backup endpoints directly to the cloud through C2 backup. So we're going to go ahead and select that option here. What this will do is open up a wizard for you to then subscribe these users to C2 Backup. So now here you can see what plans we have available. You can do individual or business. Since this is a business, we'll go ahead and select that and click Get Started. Now we're going to be able to choose how we want to build these clients and how much storage they actually want. You can do an annual billing method or a monthly one if that works better for you. You can also select how much storage they want to have. So you can go from five terabytes all the way up to 500 terabytes in this menu. If you need any more, go ahead and reach out to us. Once you hit next, you can change the domain name for the specific client. We're gonna name it basically the same name as the actual client itself. So we're gonna do Acme Corp once again. Then we can go over some of the billing details here and make sure all of that is okay. And once that's all sorted, we can hit OK and finalize this subscription. Now, back over to the C2 Partner Portal, we have that client now subscribe to their C2 Backup service now. And right now, they're under a free trial. 
you always get a free trial for every new service you start, so they can enjoy that free trial for now. So now that we got our clients all onboarded and subscribed to some C2 services, let's check out the transaction menu. This can be a menu that you can utilize to see all upcoming invoices and any of your payment history. You can export either of those. So underneath payment history, we can see that we have several other payments that have already occurred, and we can select one of these and download them through the browser. Now lastly, there is a rebate option for the C2 partners. Once again, if you need more details on the rebates and incentives for being a C2 partner, go ahead and reach out to your technical account manager here at Synology. So let's move into section three, on-prem services at scale. Like with the C2 portion, we're not gonna deep dive into each individual one of these applications because we've done so in the past on previous Synology partner online trainings. These are just some services that you can offer to your clients utilizing the Synology ecosystem. So these are the applications we're gonna be discussing in this section, and keep in mind, this list is in no way exhaustive of all the different services you can offer utilizing the Synology ecosystem. This is really just the bread and butter. Now, we're gonna start off with the Active Backup Suite. With Active Backup for Business, you can consolidate physical Windows PCs, servers, Linux servers, and even virtual machines in Hyper-V and VMware. Likewise, with Active Backup for Microsoft 365 and Google Workspace, you can do multi-tenant consolidation of that SaaS data. So by using Active Backup for Business and Active Backup for Microsoft 365 for Google Workspace in tandem, you're actually consolidating all this scattered data finally into one location. With Hyper Backup, you can take that data and back it up to Synology C2 or a co-location facility. And with Snapshot Replication, you can send snapshots to a centralized Synology NAS and provide failover services there. Let's begin with Active Backup for Business. This application allows you to centralize your backups for all of your physical Windows servers, PCs, Linux servers, and even virtual machines inside of Hyper-V and VMware. Active Backup also includes templating and reporting built into the system. And with templates, you can easily integrate multiple devices and have them all respect the backup settings that you created inside of that template. With reporting, you're able to actually send backup health reports to necessary stakeholders. Also, Active Backup for Business integrates with other Synology applications, like Hyper Backup and Snapshot Replication, forming the foundation of our disaster recovery suite. With Active Backup for SaaS, starting with Active Backup for Microsoft 365, you can provide comprehensive backups for OneDrive, SharePoint, Exchange, and even Microsoft Teams data for your clients. Likewise, with Active Backup for Google Workspace, you can provide comprehensive backups for Drive, Gmail, Contacts, and Calendar data. Both of these applications are multi-tenant by design, so you can have multiple clients all backing up to a central Synology NAS that's scalable, like an SA series or HD series we offer. Now, hyper backup to a central location, you kind of have two options. One being backing up to a co-location you're part of, the other being backing up to Synology C2 storage. In both instances, you can actually seed that initial backup. For actually backing up to Colo, for example, you would just provide your own seeding media, maybe another Synology NAS that you actually physically ship around to client sites. Now, once that data is actually inside of your co-location again, you can relink that task and continue backing up. Now, likewise, for backing up to Synology C2 storage, we offer a service called Synology C2 Express Box to get that initial backup done. If you want additional information on that process, reach out to your technical account manager to get more details. Now, Hyper Backup doesn't just take care of active backup data, but also shared folder data, application config data, and even DSM configs. Now, that .hbk file that is generated by Hyper Backup can actually be freely moved around. So just like you seeded your initial backup, you can actually ship that .hbk file back out to a client site and restore over LAN in case they have a poor connection speed. Now for snapshots to a co-location facility, this will require a centralized NAS somewhere. And this initial replication can actually be seeded much like Hyper Backup. Snapshots also integrate with Active Backup for Business, so whenever you actually do a failover for your snapshots, you're able to spin up a backup image from Active Backup for Business at that secondary site. Now another option for providing services for your clients is to use Virtual Machine Manager. You can actually provide virtual DSM instances and provide services inside of those. For example, a chat server. And fun fact, this is actually how Synology runs their own internal chat server utilizing Synology Chat in Virtual DSM. Go ahead and check out our documentation on Virtual Machine Manager for more details on that. Now, there's all kinds of other Synology Partner Online trainings that go into great detail on a bunch of these different topics. So if you need a site-to-site -site VPN between disaster recovery sites, check out our Intro to RT6600AX webinar. 
If you need more details on our different backup solutions, check out Backup Solutions for Business. And if you want to check out protecting your M365 data, go ahead and check out that webinar too. We went over quite a bit today, so let's go ahead and recap. We started off with monitoring and management, an overview of the different tools available to you for managing your Synology fleet. From CMS to Active Insight to Surveillance CMS, all of these tools can be used in concert to take care of your clients. We then took a look at C2 services at scale and how you can use the partner portal to manage your clients' subscriptions to the platform. Lastly, we rounded things off with on-prem services at scale, an overview of some services you can offer utilizing the Synology ecosystem. Now, if you need any help past what this webinar provides, go ahead and check out our Synology Partner online training page. We have hours and hours of video content covering a range of topics. Also, if you need walkthroughs or other tutorials, check out our knowledge base. All of our Synology knowledge lives there. Lastly, if you have any questions past that, go ahead and send us an inquiry and our highly trained inquiry team will get your questions answered. Next, feel free to reach out to us anytime. If you're a business user with your own internal IT team, reach out to onboarding at SynologyAmerica.com. If you're a channel partner, go ahead and reach out to SAC underscore sales at Synology.com and we can get you in touch with your technical account manager. And lastly, for our friends across the pond, we do have a Synology UK team and you can reach out to them with UK underscore sales at Synology.com. With that said, that wraps up Synology Partner Online Trainings for 2022. Thank you for tuning in, and we'll see you next year.